This easy, fresh pasta recipe is sponsored by Squarespace, the easiest way to make a fresh website. Get 10% off yours with my link in the description. Here's a delicious, fresh pasta you can make from scratch that requires no special equipment. You don't need a pasta machine. You don't need a rolling pin. You don't even need a kitchen, which is good because mine is being renovated. All you need is a bowl, and technically you don't even need that. I'll throw in about a cup of all-purpose flour to start with. That's maybe 120 grams. It does not have to be precise, but be conservative. It's always better to start with less flour. I'll make a little well in the center and then crack two eggs in there. One egg's worth of fresh pasta per person, I say. Don't worry, vegans, I'm going to give you options for everything today. You could put in maybe half a teaspoon of salt at this stage, or you could just really aggressively salt the cooking water later. Either way works. I'm just beating up those eggs inside the well. Yes, that's a plastic fork. My silverware is all packed up and I can't find it. When the eggs are smooth, just gradually start bringing some more flour into it. The well method for making pasta is traditionally done right on the cutting board, but I think unless you have a very big, flat working surface, it's much easier to do this in a big bowl. Keeps the mess contained. When I've done all I can with the fork, I'll get some flour on my hands and start kneading. Just lean the weight of your body into your palm. We're doing this to develop the gluten and make the pasta stretchy and also to integrate all of the flour that the eggs can hydrate. The dough tells you how much flour to add. This is still pretty sticky, so it can definitely absorb some more. Just dust a little more on there and then knead. When it seems like it's got all the flour it can easily take in and it's smooth and elastic, you want to cover it up and throw it in the fridge for about a half hour. That'll give the flour particles time to hydrate and a colder dough is easier to work with. Fresh egg pasta is one of life's great pleasures, but you can make fresh pasta with just water and oil. Again, about a cup of flour. Without eggs, traditionally a lot of people would use durum wheat flour for pasta. That'd be good for both taste and color, but all-purpose flour is fine too. Maybe a half a cup of water in the well, like 120 mils, maybe a tablespoon of olive oil. And I can already see that I did not put in enough liquid. I'll show you why that's bad. Mix it with a fork until you can do no more, then get in there with your hands. My dough has now stopped absorbing flour, which is fine. The dough is good, but it's not enough dough for two people. So now I'm going to have to put more water in there and watch what happens. Yeah, this is really hard to work with. It's possible it's going to come back together again, but it's going to be a slippery mess for a while. It is much easier to integrate flour into a dough that starts off too wet than it is to integrate moisture into a dough that starts off too dry. So when making pasta dough, always start with less flour and more liquid than you think you'll need. But there we are, back together again. I'll wrap that up and also throw that into the fridge. Okay, so for my meatless but not vegan pasta, I'm going to use a whole bulb of fennel. Absolutely delicious vegetable fennel is. Cut the stalks off. The stalks are very fibrous. People usually only use them in stalks and such. I'm just going to harvest the fronds off of them. Those little leaves will make a beautiful and tasty herb to finish the dish. Give those a quick chop or a tear. Not too fine or they'll just turn into dust. For the bulb, I'll just slice it very thin. Up there at the top, the slices will naturally fall apart into semicircles, which is the final shape that I want. Once you get down closer to the root end, you might start to get full circles, so I'll cut it in half and then resume slicing. Beautiful. Fennel bulb has that anise flavor that a lot of people don't like, but it's very mild. My wife doesn't like anise, and yet she liked this dish a whole lot. Also going to peel up and chop some garlic. I'll do half a head for two portions. Water goes on a boil. Lots of salt if you didn't put salt into your dough. A little salt if you did. And here's my egg dough. You might be tempted to throw some flour on there before you start working with it, just to keep it from sticking but don't. Watch what happens. The first thing we want to do is roll this out into a snake, and flour makes that a lot harder to do. You want it to be sticky at this stage. Without flour, the dough sticks to the board and to your hands, thus providing the friction that forces its expansion outward. That's okay, though. Even if you've made this mistake, you can just pull the dough out into a long, straight shape however you can. Now, before you start cutting is when you'd want to add flour liberally. Here's another mistake. Don't just chop through them. If you leave them sitting next to each other like that, they're all going to immediately stick together again. You'll have to pull them apart one by one and toss them in the flour. Again, that's a mistake you can recover from, but the better thing is to cut them and then kick the pasta away with your knife. Cut and kick, cut and kick. I'm just cutting these into thin little pieces, about as thin as I can easily cut them. Any thinner and the dough would just schmoosh under the knife. 
get all those pieces tossed in flour, and then one by one, we're just going to press them. I'm using my thumb. I'm just looking to flatten it out, but I still like to have a slightly raised edge around the outside for textural contrast. That happens naturally if you just press into the center of each noodle. This is basically a very crude orichetti I'm making here. Real orichetti usually doesn't have eggs, and they take some technique to shape. These take absolutely no skill at all, and I think they taste just as delicious. Let's call them legget ears. There you go. Lovely fresh pasta with no equipment or talent required. I usually drop them into the boiling water a handful at a time. I think that makes them less likely to stick together into one big ball when they drop in there. Fresh egg pasta cooks very differently from dried pasta. As soon as it floats to the surface forcefully, it's cooked. It just takes a minute. Dried pasta starts to go soft immediately after it's cooked. Fresh egg pasta does the opposite, at least for a few minutes. This is actually getting firmer right now, which is how I like it. I gave this three or four minutes. At some point, it would start breaking down and go softer, but in general, the window of opportunity with fresh pasta is really wide. Dried pasta is perfect for only an instant. With fresh, you've got some leeway about when you drain it. I'll just stash that on my plate for a sec and throw some olive oil in my now dry pan. Might turn the heat down to medium or medium high, but I want it hot. When the oil is shimmering and starting to smoke, I'll put the fennel bulb in and saute, stirring almost constantly. If you hit these with some really high heat and get some color on them, they go very sweet. When they seem half cooked, I'll push them to the side and drop some butter in the middle. Let it melt and then in goes the pasta. Because these noodles are big and thick, you can kind of treat them like dumplings and pan fry them a little bit. They will get a lovely brown skin on them. Stir them constantly or they will stick though. Luckily, they're big and robust enough that they won't break up much as you stir them. When they seem like they're halfway to where I want them to be, I will throw in my garlic and let it fry in there for a minute. Then I'm going to do a big pinch of chili flakes. Heat and fennel go beautifully together, as Italian sausage makers have known for generations. I'm going to top this with grated pecorino at the end, but I also like to grate some into the pan and stir it around first so that I've got some cheese running through everything. On the plate it goes, grate on some cheese, parmesan be fine too, and then top with the fennel fronds. This is a bigger version of my normal plates, so what we have here is a lover's portion, as they say, enough for two. Look at the browning on that noodle. Crazy delicious, but not necessary. You could cook these however you like. The texture of fresh egg pasta is just to die for. Softer than dried pasta, but yet it has this snap. I love it. Let's do a vegan version. I'll cut some tomatoes in half. These little ones are great for easy pasta, and the small varieties usually have the best taste of all out-of-season fresh tomatoes in the grocery store. I'll chop up some basil, and I've still got half a head of garlic chopped. Pasta dough, again, orichetti traditionally is not made with eggs anyway, but this isn't orichetti, it's legget ears. If we use durum wheat flour, as is traditional, that would have gotten us more of a yellowish color, which I think is nicer. Cut and kick, cut and kick. Time spent flicking each piece away will save the time of having to peel the pieces apart from each other. Rather than using my thumb this time, I'm just going to mash with my fingertips, press down each one. It's still naturally going to give me that raised lip around the edge, which is satisfying to bite into. This is obviously a phenomenal job to do with kids. Even very small children can smash a little lump of dough, and many hands make light work. A ton of salt because I did not salt the dough. Yes, the old adage that your pasta water should be as salty as the sea is probably technically an overstatement. That'd be too salty for most pastas, but for this, a thick dough with no salt in it, I think I mean seawater literally. Or you could just salt the dough. Either way is fine. Boil for a couple of minutes until they float forcefully to the top. With no eggs, I prefer to pull them right away after they float. They can start to get a little slimy and mushy if you cook them much longer. Drain them, and whoops, I lost a couple. Turn the heat down a bit, lots of olive oil in, and then throw in the noodles. Without the eggs and butter, they won't brown as nice, but you can fry them a little after you boil out any remaining water. Never stop stirring, and frankly, a Teflon pan would be a lot easier here. Throw in the garlic, and I'll grind in a bunch of pepper. After the garlic is fried for a minute, I'll throw in the tomatoes. You really want to do that at the last minute, otherwise they'll just disintegrate into a sauce with lots of skin in it. I want them to make this a little saucy, but to still maintain their basic structural integrity. I'll toss in half my basil, just like I do with my cheese, to have some running through everything. On the plate it goes, top with some more basil, raw olive oil, and pepper. Absolutely lovely, and obviously you could combine concepts from either of these pasta dishes to meet your dietary needs. Just as you can adapt Squarespace to meet your website needs. Maybe you just need a one-time site to centralize information about your wedding or the house you're trying to sell. Maybe you're starting a restaurant and you need an online menu. That's easy to do with Squarespace, and you can take open table reservations. Maybe you're a professional looking for 
for clients and you just need to hang your shingle somewhere. Maybe you need an online store where you can take people's orders and, more importantly, their money. Squarespace has a beautiful and functional template for anything you need to do. All you need is some pictures. Throw them in and start tweaking the template. If you can mash a lump of dough with your fingers, you can build a pretty nice Squarespace site. And then they host it for you. They can register a domain for you. They even process all your payments and stuff if you're selling things. Get 10% off your first Squarespace site or domain registration by going to squarespace.com slash ragusia. And please don't tell our handyman Dwayne that I cooked on his drop cloths. I cleaned them, Dwayne, I promise.